Okay, so how I make lips is um, on a so if it's on a face, the nose is here. Um, the rule of thumb is that the corners of your mouths will line up with the center of your eyeballs. So if you're making a piece and your lips seem really, really long or really, really small, you should check where your eyeballs are. Um, there's also something underneath your nose called the philtrum. It's the sort of the split, and I, I really enjoy putting that into my face. So what I want you to remember when you're making a mouth is that our mouths go back kind of like in a U shape. If you ever had a retainer or if you've um, seen dentures or had a casting of your mouth made, you'll know that your, your teeth go back in the space and your mouth basically is the, the house for your teeth. So you want to make sure that as you're making this, you're not just slapping on kind of like, like wax lips, like the candy that little kids used to have. Um, but instead you're allowing it to sort of recede back into space. So I am going to put, I'm going to build this area up with a little bit of clay. So it's a coil of clay and it doesn't really have a lot of shape yet. I'm just going to build it up. Then I'm going to take another coil of clay. I'm going to put it underneath and I'm going to be knocking a lot of this down, but you want to, I want to start with a little bit of something here because your lips do come out you know as they hold your teeth they do come out of your face a little bit um, so my I have kind of small lips so you I again I'm using a mirror as I do this um, our lips will come you know, our face, they'll come to a point here, and then there's kind of a little flat when they come up from here um, in your mouth. And they don't really round as much as you think. They're kind of like a plane, a flat plane meets another flat plane, and it goes back into space. So with that philtrum. So I want to make sure that I'm allowing that plane to happen back. Then here I'm going to kind of roll it forward with my fettling knife, rolling it out of there, and bringing it down. People often, there's a ways to stylize lips. Um, you'll see many sort of Renaissance sculptures, the, this part will kind of divot up and then come down. Um, it's very sort of babyish, or like how a baby's lips are. Um, you can do that if you want. It's not really my style, but you know, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to try to bring this is a little tall. The nose would already be there, so I'm going to cut that away. Um, underneath and on the sides of your mouth, like up here, your mustache area. Um, it, it also is going to come back into space, so you want to make sure that it's not just like a square area, but then you'll have buildup of your face on each side, and then underneath here in your mouth, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of like a fatty deposit. Um, that also kind of holds your teeth and hold, you know, gives space for your mouth to, for your teeth to exist in your mouth. So you want to make sure that you build that in. Now there's, for me, I have a little bit of a divot here. So I want to make sure that I'm building this up. And so it's not just, your mouth is not, your lips are not just one separate thing, but they have all these other, there's all this other area around your mouth that is important and that if you, have this is very flat, then your mouth will seem, will not seem correct. And as I said, I have particularly small lips, so you might have bigger lips than mine and much more visually pleasing lips, and so that's nice, but uh, but for me, this is somewhat how my lips look, and this is how I sculpt my lips. Now, also, people have some other sculptors come in and they'll put the little bit of lines on your lips. If you want, you can. 
I don't really usually do that. I let the lips just kind of be however. It's entirely up to you. So the, the really the important thing for me is that everything kind of comes back into space, that you push, push your mouth back, that you build up underneath, that you allow there to be a little divot in right there. If you look at your face, this what's great about this is it really makes you look at your face. If you look at your face, there's always going to be a little bit of a divot down there where your lips end, and then there's these two like kind of fatty deposits. My philtrum is pretty prominent. Not everyone's is, so you might have to look at your look at your face and decide how prominent is that. Um, your nose would start up here. Measure. Make sure that you measure your face. Oftentimes, when people put in the the features below their nose, they'll make your nose really, really big, and then you'll have like no space for your lips and your chin. Um, but if you measure your face, you'll notice that the space from under your nose to your chin usually is about the size, the, the amount of space from your nose to your eyebrows, or even a little bit bigger. So don't skimp on space when you're doing that. So yeah, so there's there's some lips.